Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. All right, so what is the goddamn deal, YouTube? It is, of course, your boy Volandis back with another video. And in today's video, we're going to be going over how I, me, myself, Volandis, personally edit film photos. All right, so before we get this video started, a few things I wanna mention. One being, if you have not went over and uh, beat up the like button yet, please go beat the like button's ass for me. It is always gratefully and truthfully appreciate it and two before we edit any of these photos i do want to thank fw photo lab for scanning and processing all of the photos you guys are about to see all right so the elephant in the room uh, the reason a lot of people may have clicked on this video and if you did click on this video for this reason i really just don't understand where you are in life that is that serious for you but the the purest the film purist they're probably punching the air very upset that i am editing my film in the first place but i am one a believer of doing whatever the hell you want with your work if that means editing it don't let anybody who's um you know the film nerd the film nerd of the world tell you that it is not right to edit your film because um it is you can do whatever you want if you feel like your film needs to be edited please do so i edit all of my work film or digital it does not matter it always goes into lightroom or some form of editing so it is okay to edit your film if you want to i do a lot of other film photographers edit their film and a lot of people you know they have their opinions about it and they can have their opinions but at the end of the day it's not their work and i've never understood why people get so pressed and upset and just like their panties in a bunch about something that does not affect them so um yeah anyway that's my rant on that i did my film work because i don't give a fuck what anybody has to say about it and I, you know i do the things that i want to do and the things that i like for myself and my work so yes i'm going to be showing you guys how i edit some of my film photos so without talking too much let's just get straight into the video and start editing some of these film photos all right so we have six photos here in lightroom ready to edit these are all film photos and they're just straight straight scans no editing has been done to these at all um i gave you guys a few different situations so you can see like a few different lighting situations and how i go about editing um things that have different light um i know a lot of people are going to ask most of these photos actually all these photos are either overexposed a stop or two stops. I do believe this was overexposed two stops. Um, if I can remember what um, film stock I use, I will, you know, let you guys know. The good thing for me and what gravitates me towards shooting film a lot is that a lot of the colors are already instilled inside of the image because it is film and, you know, film stocks have their their colors that they have. But um, yeah, these, these are TIFF scans. Uh, they're pretty flat, but there are some very high quality TIFF scans. So if I zoom in on this, you know, these are some, you know, some pretty high quality images. Uh, let's see, like this one, you know, some pretty high quality images. You can see like the, the goddamn bumps on his neck, but I ain't gonna do my mans like that. So let's just zoom about it here. But these are some high quality scans. So um, yeah, you can uh, do whatever you want to these. It's also film, so the dynamic range is there and all that. So yeah, which one are we going to edit first? Let's just, uh, let's edit this one first. I like this one. So I do edit on a white background and I do kind of zoom the photo out just because I don't want it to be like super close while I'm editing. Cause I want to see it kind of how um, I'm, you know, I'm going to be presenting it. So that's on a white background, um, but Y'all already know that. So let's just get into editing this photo. If you've watched any of my videos about editing before, you know that I don't necessarily do things in order. I always kind of just edit in a way that whatever I see, I kind of edit that. So like if I'm looking at the highlights and then I randomly notice that this isn't like blue enough, then I'll go and fix that. But, but anyway, so what first thing I like to do is I always like to add at least like 20 to 25 contrast to the image because um, the scans are pretty flat um, for this one I'm going to bring the highlights down I'm going to bring I could bring these shadows up but 
um, for the vibe that I'm, you know, specifically going for, I'm going to bring these down because I kind of like want these to be like shadows down here. Um, bring these darks up. I usually leave these, these whites alone, but um, I'll bring it to five. And then for here, the texture, we're going to bring it to five. Clarity, I was shooting with a Pro Mist filter, so um, there's definitely, this image is definitely soft, but for me, it can be a little bit softer. So we're going to do negative about eight. Uh, see, no, nah, that's too much. Oh, 18, that's why. Negative eight. And then vibrance, you know, like I said, it's a little bit flat. So we're going to bring some vibrance back into the image. Good 30 usually works for me five on a saturation this was shot on actually oh gotta take my medicine this image was shot on portra 400 so you know the colors are you know ex pretty much exactly what i saw that day so um these are the accurate colors of what i'm what i'm seeing what you guys are seeing these colors are pretty much accurate and down here um these adjustments are probably the most important because this is the uh, tone curve is probably where you're going to get that color back and where you're going to get that contrast and all like the you know the glowiness and all that stuff that I like in my images so for me I usually bring the shadows down because I don't like them being faded but then I bring the darks up because the shadows make it a little bit too dark then these lights I actually bring these lights up and I'm gonna bring uh no I like I actually like this I'm gonna bring it to 10 you know and then down here, I don't necessarily mess with any of these colors because all of the colors that's in here are the colors that I want them to be. Um, a lot of people have opinions about changing the colors of film stocks because then they're like, that doesn't even look like the film stock anymore. So like, what was the purpose of even shooting with the film stock if you were gonna change the colors? And in my opinion, again, who the hell cares? Cause it has nothing to do with the person. A lot of people could just want to shoot film for the dynamic range or for other things and kind of, you know, maybe they didn't like the, the colors that that film produced in that moment. So they changed it, which is OK. And it's fine. Like everybody's going to be OK. So who cares? But for me, unless like something's off, I don't necessarily mess with the hues of these colors. And for me, these colors turned out well, so I don't necessarily have anything to change. But I will come down here and I will add some saturation to the blues because this the scarf was definitely more blue than um, it was. The sky was definitely more blue than like what's showing in the photo. So I'm actually bringing that up a lot, 50. Um, her skin tone, I might bring it up like five just to give it a little bit more. She got like some red undertones. Um, actually not red, like yellowish. So bring that up five. Then I'm gonna bring just everything up to five, just so it can be a little bit more saturated. Mm, Ten on that, and then yeah, um, luminance, and, and just in case like anything's like the sky, if I wanted it to be a, like a deeper blue, then like I would bring it down. But for me, it's fine being like kind of a light blue, so um, it doesn't need to be changed. Her skin color, um, I'm bring that down just a little bit, it's just because it's a little bit too bright for me. Um, and then here, split toning. Sometimes with my film photos, I do use split toning. Like, um, if like I wanted this photo to be like a little bit more yellowy or orangey, I would make it like a, a very subtle kind of, you know, and like that's definitely not noticeable. You can kind of see it in here, like in the walls and stuff like that. But like, um, you have to actually like really be looking kind of in my opinion. And then this, if I wanted that to be like a little bit more like, you know, um, usually what I try to do is look at the colors that's already in the highlights and already in the shadows and kind of just add more to it with split toning and then just like see how that works out. But um, actually, I wasn't even going to use split toning for <laughs> for this image, but just even showing you all that example, I kind of like how it looks. So for me, I, I like it. So I, I'm going to leave it. Um, this image is pretty sharp, so um, I don't need to add sharpness, but I add sharpness to literally everything. Not too much though. And then detail, I also put at 35 just cause. And then um, noise reduction, don't really mess with that cause the image isn't noisy. So um, yeah, a lot of people also 
A lot of people also talk down on adding noise reduction to film photos because it takes away the grain, but it's like, man, let people do what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm all just for letting people do what they want to do. But anyway, enough talking about that. This photo for me would be done. I don't necessarily do too much to my film images, which is why I like shooting with film because I don't have to do much in Lightroom if anything at all. So like it usually doesn't take me that long to edit a film photo in Lightroom. So for me, this image would be done and I would move on. So let's move on to this. This photo is of Corinne. It was taken on Cinestale 800T. Um, I like this photo a lot, but um, as you can see, it's like, you know, needs, needs some, uh, definitely needs some stuff <laughs> to be done to it. So first of all, let's go up here, let's bring the exposure down because it's definitely overexposed let's bring this contrast to like 35 let's bring these highlights down let's bring these shadows down like negative 30 um, let's bring these blacks down to like negative 10 and then clarity negative 10 texture 5 we're gonna get those Cinestale 800T colors up out of this so let's get that vibrance about it there actually we can add more because it's low-key like missing a lot and for me like you can see the colors already coming back into this i definitely don't necessarily need to do anything or add too much more to anything and i think sometimes people overcomplicate like very simple things and like try to get certain colors and i'm all for getting like the painterly kind of vibe in my images and stuff like that but i think it depends um it, it definitely depends on what image i'm editing i'm kind of more so do it do that on images of things and not people so um for this this is uh this is already great for me but i'm gonna come down to the tone curve and you know bring these shadows down kind of just to get this 800t looking like 800t which is that kind of filmic cinematic vibe like kind of movie like vibes i'm gonna bring um these darks up a little bit i'm gonna bring these highlights down but i'm gonna bring the lights up just to get that glow like i said as per usual i was using a promise filter so you know we got that we got that glow and to be honest this already is looking you know very good but i'm gonna come down here tweak the greens just a tad um her shirt is what color red i do believe so yeah we're gonna bring that up to like 40 because we want those colors to pop her skin color uh, her skin color uh is a little you know desaturated so we'll bring that up to like 15. Um, when shooting with 800T I don't necessarily think that um, the vibes are you know very realistic color-y vibes so it's kind of it's kind of cool to um, just kind of play around with this and kind of you know make a movie out of your image which is what I like to do when looking at these photos I'm gonna bring these blues up to about 10 and to be completely honest, let me bring this up. That looks great. I'm not gonna mess with the split toning or the, um, the highlights or the shadows because um, it looks great. And for me, this this looks like, you know, movie vibe. So I'm with that. Bring this up, 35, detail to 35. And I'm all done with this photo. Like I said, I, it does not take me very long. So sorry if you're watching this video and you expected like some cool, kind of tips and tricks and like to really see me do something kind of like out of the ordinary or different but I kind of stick with it being simple especially with some of my work most of my work being documentary and pictures of people I definitely don't try to get too like artsy or like too like different with the vibe so um that's usually just I usually just stay real regular and just try to keep things real simple so Right, so that is that basically that is how i edit my film photos like i said i apologize if you guys expected more out of this video but while we're teaching um how to edit photos real quick let's just give a big special thanks to the sponsor of this video which is skillshare
So if you want to learn more about photo editing, Skillshare is the perfect place for you. But the cool thing about Skillshare is that it's not just one place where you can learn about photography. You can learn about a plethora of things on Skillshare, whether that's cooking, animation, design, business, or anything else. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning. So there's no ads and they're always launching new and premium classes so you can stay up to date with learning. A class that I'm interested in and watching at the moment is a class by digital storyteller Halise. In this class, she goes over making videos for Instagram and telling engaging stories in less than a minute. She teaches you how to do jump cuts, finding inspiration, picking your themes, incorporating text, and a lot more to upgrade your Instagram video storytelling. So the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And as always, thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right, man. So that's going to wrap it up for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. If you guys are already subscribed, I'm not talking to you because you already did what you had to do. Please like the video, share the video. Let's get out of here, man. And let's go do some shit. You know the vibes. Let's get it.